Good morning, this is Beth Wearsdale and um, I'm going to be reading chapter 2 today of S Angels, my sci-fi fantasy fiction book. Um, apologies first for my first video because I was so nervous, so nervous. Um, so hopefully I'm not going to be as bad today. <laughs> um, thank you very much to everyone who shared my first video. That was so appreciated. I can't even begin to tell you how appreciative I am. Um, being self-published, every share, like, it all helps. It really does. Um, I need a hundred or, yeah, about a hundred Amazon reviews to actually get noticed on Amazon. Um, the good news is, thanks to what you've been doing so far to help me, um, when you search on Google for science fiction and then ancient aliens, I'm on page one. Yes. So thank you very much. Um, so I will now get on and read you chapter two. And this is where you actually meet um, the Earth's angels. There were five of them and they were beautiful. I couldn't tell if they were male or female as they weren't wearing any clothing and they didn't seem to have any physical body differences like ours, such as breasts or visible genitalia. They were what I can only describe as angelic looking aliens. They glistened a mix of ice white and the most beautiful shade of blue and silver. I could barely make out facial features from the distance as they glided across the room. Two of them made their way in my direction and I assumed my bed, considering it was my machine that was making the loud noises. As they approached, I noticed what appeared to be long silvery blue hair running down their backs to their legs. They both had the most stunning blue eyes. They looked like the eyes on peacock feathers and they sparkled like polished sapphires. I was in total awe of their beauty and I literally felt as if I were in the presence of angels. Was I religious? I had no idea either way. I didn't know where the other three went in the room, but the two who had reached my bedside were, were busy checking the futuristic looking machines, pressing buttons and discussing their findings, I think. Even up close, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Their language was nothing that I'd recognised. I tried to keep my breathing slow and at the same pace as the other women, keeping up my sleeping pretense. As I lay there, being as still as humanly possible and watching the alien angels, I heard another machine beginning to make the same noises as mine. I wondered if the woman was awake and confused like me or still sleeping peacefully. The two angels at my bedside started to move the machines and I could hear them unclip things. Then I could feel their alien hands touching and examining me, but their touch didn't feel like it should. It was feather light and their gentle touch sent a feeling of calm throughout my body, which was perfect timing because I, could, I was beginning to feel another wave of sharp pain in my swollen stomach. However, the moment they touched me, it melted away and I was so relieved. I don't think I would have been able to maintain my fake slumber if they hadn't. I felt so confused as I didn't know if I were in early labour and that's why I was getting the pain or if it was something else. My baby bump certainly didn't look big enough to be full term. At the foot of my bed, they spoke to each other softly and I was mesmerised by their sheer beauty and the graceful way they moved. They moved fluidly as if there was no gravity. Suddenly, my bed and the machine started to move on their own. The alien angels were gliding in front of my bed with me gliding behind them, but there were no sounds of moving wheels or scraping metal on the floor. Were they using their minds? I wasn't sure, but my bed and my body were now giving off the same shimmering glow of ice white. As we left the cavernous room and all the sleeping pregnant women, I picked up on some sounds behind me. Maybe more machinery. I wondered if the other woman was follow 
other woman was following us was with the other three alien angels. This would make sense after hearing another machine making the same noises as mine. We entered a corridor and I was really surprised just how pretty everything was. Not just the angels, but even the corridor. Its surface looked so smooth and it had its own kind of pearlescent sheen of ice white, but with a hint of silver and purple. It looked like the inside of a shell, mother of pearl, or maybe the inside of an ice cave. But the corridor didn't feel cold at all. In fact, the temperature was perfect for me and I wondered what the walls would feel like to the touch. I felt so at ease too, which I thought so odd considering I still didn't seem to have any memories of who or where I was and why this was all happening. While we traveled down the long corridor, I could feel waves of pain coming and going. And every time a wave of pain began, one of the alien angels would touch my hand, making it ebb away. Not only was I extremely grateful not to be suffering, I was also relieved that it gave me the chance to keep pretending I was asleep. I couldn't see much as we traveled down the long corridor. I knew we were passing rooms as I could just about make out shadows through my eyelashes in my peripheral vision. A few minutes later, we approached a large decorative archway and it was stunning. There were beautiful symbols at the top near the edge that I thought I recognized. The symbols were intricate and seemed to glow against the darker background. They looked like Egyptian hieroglyphs. We slowly entered the room beyond and it was even larger than the one we'd just left. It was draped in sheer white shimmering veils separating sections into cubicles on one side. Then alien angels stopped and my bed came to a gentle halt. One of the angel aliens glided away while the other did something to the machines next to me. My bed was turned around and reversed gently into one of the white veiled cubicles. Another bed glided past with an, another sleeping woman and the other three angels I'd seen earlier. The alien angel next to me left, gracefully gliding away to the other woman's bed, clearing what little view I had. And then I saw the opposite wall. It was massive and it was made of a glistening kind of glass. There, inside the wall, were hundreds of oval capsules, all containing baby animals. I couldn't believe what I was seeing at first. My brain was trying to de deny what my eyes were showing me. As I stared at the encapsulated animal fetuses, suddenly the machines next to me made a strange noise and I felt my whole lower body beginning to go numb from my breast down. The machine was injecting me with something through the IV and I felt something warm rush through my veins. The pain was disappearing and it was such a relief. Moments later, the five aliens all glided out of the room, giving me the chance to look around properly. I turned my head to the left and looked through the sheer veil. There next to me were the, was the other woman whose machine had also been making strange noises. She was still sleeping, sleeping soundly and looked so utterly peaceful that I actually envied her. She had short black hair with oriental features and dark smooth skin. Her bump was slightly bigger than mine, although not by much from what I could see. I looked back to the wall of oval capsules and I was amazed at the selection of baby animals. There were lion cubs, dolphins, badgers, various fish and so many more. Then it struck me that they were all animals. There was not one human fetus among them. They were all floating in the same sparkling fluid, just like the shimmering glow that angels had surrounding their bodies. The baby animals were inside their amniotic sacs, their umbilical cords and placentas were attached to some sort of organic looking device on the inside of every capsule wall. Each capsule pulsed its shimmer like a constant heartbeat rhythm. 
While I laid on the soft bed processing what I'd seen so far, I tried to move my lower body, but nothing would happen. The only things I could move were my neck, head and arms, and it made me feel so vulnerable. There was no way I could get up and run if I needed to. The only thing that was stopping my panic was the logic that these alien angels hadn't hurt me so far and that they seemed to be making sure that I wasn't suffering. They didn't give off any negative or evil vibes either. In fact, they seemed to have a gentle and peaceful aura emanating from them whenever they were near. While thinking about the whole situation and wondering why the animals were here, I heard them communicating as they were making their way back. I steadied my breathing and closed my eyes again, just enough so I could continue to watch them. This time, there were four of them. Each of the alien angels were covered in a sheer silvery white veil and had gloves on their slender hands. Each pair had a large glass capsule between them, just like the capsules in the big glass wall. Both capsules were glowing and were full of the glistening fluid and inside were the organic devices attached to the sides. Although they appeared to be carrying the capsules, they weren't actually touching them and I assumed that they were using their minds somehow and it was like magic. Two of the angels walked towards the sleeping wo woman in the next cubicle and the other two came my way. As they approached, it, it occurred to me again just how much they looked like angels. When the aliens stood and turned at the bottom of my bed, I realised it wasn't just their long shimmering hair, but also delicate silvery feathered wings down their backs too. Somehow, it made me feel even calmer. The capsule was hovering in midair at the foot of the bed, glowing and sparkling gently. Then the two angels moved to either side of me, lifting the top of my bed up a few inches, and I wondered if the same thing was happening to the other woman. I didn't like the feeling of going through this alone, even if she was still sleeping. I felt the angels pulling down the thin silvery sheet that was covering my lower body and the gown I was wearing being rolled up to the bottom of my breasts. The angels on my right hovered the, sorry, the angel on my right hovered its hand over my pregnant stomach and as soon as it started to move its hand, my skin started to glisten and glow a silvery white. The angel was so close to me that I could see definite human-like facial features which looked soft and female. Her peacock eyes were such deep colours you could get lost in them. There was a marking on her chest that began at her neck, almost like a necklace. It ran down between where her breasts would be and along the neckline with what looked like tiny sparkling diamonds along her markings. She was beautiful. The other angel ran its hands about an inch distance over the capsule, making it shimmer and pulse the same silvery white as my stomach. When it finished, it glided to the left of me and I noticed that it also had human-like features. Its features were more masculine looking, even with the silvery blue shimmering hair. It was definitely a male with a face that had sharper angles and he was slightly thicker set than the female. There were no necklace type marks on his chest area, but he did have beautiful markings around each wrist. There were two thin, dark silver bands on each of his wrists with symbols similar to those I'd already seen on the archway entrance in between the bands. When both angels were either side of me, they both hovered their hands over my pregnant stomach, making the silvery white light grow brighter. At first, I wasn't sure what I was seeing. It still felt as if my eyes were trying to focus. Moments later, the scene before me sharpened and as they raised their hands, something slippery and shiny began to appear between them. It was slowly rising out of my stomach. At first, I could see some sort of membrane, then fluid, and as it carried on rising, I could see faint stripes and what looked like dark, wet fur inside. 
My mind was screaming. What the hell? I was pregnant with a bloody tiger cub? I didn't know what to make of it and my instincts were screaming at me to get up and run as far, fast and as far away as possible. My logic, however, was telling me, you can't run, stupid. Your body is numb. I continued to watch with a sick fascination, my eyes glued to the unbelievable scene before me. The only thing that stopped me screaming aloud was the fact that my stomach wasn't being cut open like a caesarean section. There wasn't a drop of blood. Plus, I still didn't feel any pain. The small tiger cub was passing through my skin as the light pulsed and flew, flowed. It was contained inside the amniotic sac with the umbilical cord still attached to its small, soft underbelly. It looked so peaceful, curled in a tight ball with its eyes closed and its shiny dark striped fur glistened in the amniotic fluid. The alien angels raised the tiny tiger cub between their hands with precision and ease and moved it to the hovering capsule at the bottom of my bed. Just as it had passed through my stomach into their hands, it now passed through the wall of the glass capsule until it was safely inside. The organic device suddenly pulsed with bright white light and I watched in amazement as it seemed to draw the end of the umbilical cord and placenta to it. When the placenta and the device connected, there was one last pulse of bright light and the capsule began to pulse, gently pulse rhythmically, just like the others across the room inside the wall. I looked down at my now empty stomach and watched the silvery white glow emanating from my stomach beginning to fade, gradually fade. There wasn't any scar on my stomach at all from what I could see and I felt an immense relief. I did notice faint pale stretch marks however which confused me as my pregnancy bump hadn't been that big. Had I been pregnant before? Had I carried other animals in my belly, I wondered. I still wasn't feeling any pain and I could sense a subtle feeling coming back to my body. My feet and legs were beginning to tingle and the feeling gradually was moving upwards. The female alien angel lowered her hands and then she turned her head and looked right at me. The kindness in her sparkling sapphire blue eyes went straight to my heart. I felt loved and I couldn't explain the feeling, but I did indeed feel loved. Her eyes flowed with compassion and as she looked at me, I wondered if she knew I wasn't asleep. As she moved towards me, the male alien angel glided towards the exit with the encapsulated small tiger cub hovering between his hands. The female alien gently rolled down the white gown, covering my body with her power, and then she slid this thin silvery sheet back up to the top of my waist. Moving her way to the end of my bed, I watched her as she raised a hand to her throat. When she touched her throat, the silvery white glow appeared and then she smiled at me again. My name is Zanika, she said slowly, her voice almost musical and very soft. I knew you are awake, young one. You can open your eyes now. As my eyes opened, they connected with hers and again I felt love and peace coming from her straight to my heart. I weirdly felt no fear or anxiety, just totally calm. What is your name, young one? She asked. I don't know my name, I told her in a strained whisper. Do not worry, young one. Memory loss is common when you have been asleep for a long time. A long time? My mind screamed. How long have I been asleep for? I asked. She looked at me with kindness shining through her blue peacock eyes. I believe five of your earth years, she gently stated. You have given your earth six animals back. You should feel very proud. My, my mind was reeling. Not only had I been asleep for five years, but I'd been pregnant with more than one animal. I was totally stunned and stared at her in utter disbelief. 
I began to take deep, slow breaths, trying not to let the feeling of shock overwhelm me. Zanika must have sensed the feeling of anxiety flowing through my whole body as she suddenly spoke in her calm manner. I will get you something to eat and drink, young one. We may talk some more when you have calmed your mind and your body, she said. With that, she glided towards the archway where we'd come in. As my emotions calmed with each deep breath I took, I began to try and sit up. There was no discomfort in my stomach at all, which surprised me considering I had basically given birth to a tiger cub. The thought wasn't quite as disturbing to me as before, and I had to admit my body felt great. There were no physical signs that would indicate that I'd been asleep for so many years either. I used my arms and hands to lift my upper body until I was sitting on the bed, and once completely upright, I swung my legs to the side so they dangled over the edge. It felt wonderful being upright, and I seemed to have all the feeling back in my lower body, which felt great. I looked at my bare arms and hands, amazed at how good my skin looked. I ran my hands up and down the upper part of my arms, and my skin felt so soft and smooth. The alien angels obviously took very good care of us, and I could feel a great appreciation towards them. Next, I ran my hands down my hair. It was pale blonde, long and thick, and felt so soft as it slipped through between my fingers. A movement to the side of me made made me turn my gaze to the other woman in the next cubicle. She was just giving birth like I had done moments before. I couldn't look away as the two other alien angels dressed in their sheer veils and gloves did the same process to her as Zanika and her counterpart had done to me. They too were hovering their hands over the sleeping woman's pregnant stomach and as the light glowed bright white, a creature was beginning to appear inside its amniotic sac. It was, a pure, it was pure white in colour, curled into a tight ball with soft but thin looking fur. It had small round ears which were flush against his head and a tiny black nose. I realised it was a tiny baby polar bear. They transferred the baby polar bear to the glistening capsule at the end of the end of her bed with precision. As I watched, I realised with this second birth, I was starting to feel it was a truly magical scene. The shock of it being animals instead of human babies was really starting to wear off. One of the aliens began to exit with a newborn polar bear in its capsule and the other one covering this and the other one covered the sleeping woman's form with her white gown and thin silver sheet. I wondered how long she'd been asleep for and how many animals she'd birthed. I also wondered if we'd always birthed the same animals or if they were different each time, considering the number of different species that were inside the glass wall. While my mind was going over these thoughts, Zanika entered the room again. Between her hands hovered a black stone tray laden with a drink, fruit and chopped vegetables, some of which I didn't recognise, but as I ran my hands over the uh, sorry, as I ran my eyes over the selection, my stomach growled loudly, which made Zanika smile. I couldn't stop myself from smiling back. Her beautiful face oozed friendliness and it felt good to smile. Thank you, Zanika, I whispered as I took the tray from her. I began to eat some of the large green grapes and they were so delicious. I didn't think anything else could possibly taste that amazing. You have many questions, I think, Zanika stated. I believe that's the understatement of the year, I thought to myself. Where exactly am I? I asked, between grapes. You are still on Earth, young one, she replied softly. You are on one of our spacecrafts. This craft contains our medical units and our main control centre. This is where all humans stay, while we heal your Earth and replenish your animal kingdom. 
When she spoke, there wasn't a hint of judgment, only a soft kindness. Her sapphire blue eyes sparkled as she continued. We arrived just as your earth, earth's water turned to poison. Your people were starving and dying. Your animals were dying out and your earth was failing, she said. Still, there was no judgment, but as I listened to what she was telling me, I was judging us. I couldn't believe my ears. How could this happen? Was it even possible? Zanika seemed so sincere. She couldn't be lying. In my heart, I didn't really think she was capable of lying to me as she came across so pure. Is that why I just gave birth to a tiger cub? I asked in a shocked whisper. Yes, she replied in her musical voice. There were no healthy animals left that we could breed to replenish your earth. We have crafts like this one all over your planet. We had no choice but to return and save your earth. Have you visited our planet before? I questioned, my voice sounding a little stronger after sipping the fresh water. Yes, we have visited your earth many times before. It is why your race calls us angels or gods and have created images and sculptures of us. We have been visiting your planet for as long as I can remember, she said. No wonder I thought they looked like angels. They were angels. There we go. So that was chapter two of Earth's Angels. Um, I know it's a very, very original concept and um, it's, um, it's like nothing I've ever read, I've got to be honest. Um, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope you, um, you find it as intriguing as um, my other readers. And, um, and it does become extremely magical. Um, reactivating Stonehenge was epic in my head when I wrote that. And that's in chapter 21. Um, but I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And um, if, you, if you did enjoy it, um, please buy a copy. And um, if you have already got a copy, please make sure you do an Amazon or Goodreads re review for me. Um, as I said at the beginning, it really, really helps. I need at least 100 Amazon reviews to get noticed um, on the main searches. Um, and just to let you know, if you haven't already seen, I've recently been um, Google verified, which is fantastic news. So that means my presence on the search engines has really increased and now Google's acknowledged that, so that's brilliant news. But thank you ever so much for listening. Thank you for your support. Um, as I said, the main thing is to, to keep sharing my posts, tell your friends and family about my book, especially if you've you know read it and enjoyed it. Thank you every, everyone who's been supporting me. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much your support means. It, it means a great deal to me. And, um, and keep sharing. Thank you. And uh, I'll try and do chapter three as soon as I can. Thank you. Bye.